praise thy brothers and sisters, Reverend Dr. Catherine Weathers from Moments of Miracles Mom. And today, I want to use my parental skills to focus on parents today. And the theme is talk to me first. Despite common perception, children, including teenagers, are more influenced by their parents than by peers. Children always look first to the immediate adult in their lives for guidance and for framing the world in a way they can relate to and understand. They go elsewhere only when they know or sense that we are not willing to be present or available. What decays of research demonstrates should be no great surprise. Families who sustain this kind of connectedness around issues such as sexuality raise healthier children who makes better decisions take greater responsibility for their actions and perhaps, most importantly, postpone potentially risky behaviors such as having children out of wedlock. When we as parents dress our children, we want our children to look good at all times. But we must be reminded to dress them in stylish clothes, not sluttish clothes that their clothes shouldn't be too tight and too revealing. As a parent, we must promote abstaining from sex to our children. We must place those moral values in them at an early age today. It is a precautionary measure to prevent many harmful diseases or receiving one of the deadly sexual diseases. Amen? So it's important how we teach our child or children about sex. The challenge. Just a few decades ago, parents had at least a good chance to be the first to talk to their sons or daughters about sex. I know my mother was able to talk to me and she talked to me about how her mother didn't talk to her. And I know a few people who complain that their parents have never talked to them about sex. And we find when that happens, it leaves a huge gap when they start raising children, amen? And they could explain things gradually according to the child's age and need, such as at a certain age, 12, 13, masturbation is normal, but overuse of it is abnormal. That has all changed. Children are being exposed to sexual messages at increasingly early ages, and the sexual content of children media is on the rise, says the book, The Lolita Effect. Does this new reality help children or hurt them? Brothers and sisters, it can do both. Women, single women who are raising young men should not let their young men see them date a lot of men or be sleeping around with men because it actually exposes their sons to disrespect their mothers. A lot of people won't teach this, but 
It needs to be taught. What should you know? Explicit content is everywhere. In her book, Talk to Me First, Deborah Rockman writes that conversation, advertisement, movies, books, songs, lyrics, TV shows, text, games, billboards, and poems, and computer screens are so laced with sexual imagery, language, and in the windows that many teens, preteens, and even young children must conclude, at least unconsciously, that sex must be the absolute most important thing in the world. And everybody wants to know what it is. Marketing is partly to blame. Advertisers and retailers peddle sexy clothing for children, training them from an early age to put undue emphasis on appearance. Marketers know about young children's vulnerability and they exploit them says the book, So Sexy So Soon. And even on Facebook, we see parents with their children letting these young kids, the dancing is too sexual preoccupied, their clothing. But again, it's up to the parents. We say the parents don't know any better. The parents don't feel like there's anything wrong with this, but they fail to realize how perverted some people in this world is today. A lot of parents have not been exposed to evil people, so they do not know. They have not been exposed. I was never exposed when I was raising my son to understand that they were pedophiles out there who were interested in raping young boys or I knew about young girls. Amen? So this must be understood today. All these sexual images and products are not intended to sell children on sex, but on shopping. So they want us to believe. Information is not enough. Just as there is a difference between knowing how a car works and being a responsible driver, there is a difference between having knowledge about sex and using that knowledge to make wise decisions. The bottom line today, more than ever, you need to help your children train their powers of discerning so that they can distinguish both right and wrong. And if you would turn with me to Hebrews 5.14. Hebrews 5.14 which says, but solid food is for mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So what you can do, get involved. No matter how awkward it may be, talking to your children about sex is your responsibility. Accept it. Bible principle 1 in Proverbs 22 and 6, which says, Train up a child in the way he or she should go. Even when he grows old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and 6. It's up to the parents to train the children. And you must start early. Have small discussions instead of having one big talk. Take advantage of casual moments to communicate. Perhaps while the two of you are traveling in your car or doing a chore, to help your child open up, 
Ask viewpoint questions. For example, rather than saying, are you attracted to ads like that? You could say, why do you think advertisers use those type of images to sell products? After your child answer, you could ask, how do you feel about that? Bible principle in Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. You must impress upon your sons or daughters God commandments. Amen. Keep it age appropriate. Preschoolers can be taught the proper name of sex organs such as vagina and or penis, as well as how to protect themselves from sexual pressures. And I always try to tell people, little kids, they have the right to say no. They must be mindful who they're around. If they're around the sexual predators and their parents or no other person can help them, they need to say no, but they need to keep quiet, not fuss, until they can get themselves home, get out of the way, so that they don't get hurt. Because our babies are getting hurt today. As they grow, children can be told basic facts about reproduction, like how babies are born. By property, they should have come to understand more fully the physical and moral aspects of sex and the importance of not having sex out of wedlock. You'll hear me say that again. In part values, start teaching your child, little Johnny or Mary, at an early age about honesty, integrity, and respect. Then when sex is discussed, you have a foundation to build on. I'm finding not enough parents are teaching their children how to be honest or what the word integrity and respect means. Also, state your values clearly. For example, if you view sex before marriage as improper, say so. Because one thing I've learned, if you tell your young child that you believe that they shouldn't be having sex before they get married, they grow up with that idea and they try to respect that because that is something that their parent instilled in them. And they don't have to hear it over and over and over again. They could have heard it just one time. I heard my mother tell me that God doesn't like homosexuality. And from that one time her telling me that, I knew it was wrong in God's eyesight. And when men approach me, when women approach me to have sex with me at a young age, and brother, they do, before you're eight years, before you're seven years old, eight years old, 12 years old. Parents, you really need to understand that. And some of these people be your friend and they are acting like your friend, but they're, they're trying to befriend your children on the side. And you must be mindful and careful of that. So, for example, if you view sex before marriage as improper, say so, and explain why it is wrong and harmful. Why? Because they have unwanted children that they have to take care of until the child is 21. That's one. Or they can get a disease that could kill them. Teens who say they know that their parents disapprove of teens having intercourse are less likely to actually have sex, said the book Beyond the Big Talk. Set the example. Live by the value you teach. For instance, do you laugh at obscene jokes, dress 
provocatively flirt. Such actions may undermine the moral values you are trying to teach your children, if you're trying to teach them any moral values at all. Bible principle, Romans 2.21. Do you, however, the one teaching someone else, not teach yourself? That's Romans 2.21. Lastly, keep it positive. Sex is a gift from God, and in the right circumstances in marriage, it can be a source of great pleasure. You can turn to this, Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. May your fountain be blessed. And may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be captivated by her love. Amen. That was Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. Let your child know that in time he or she may be able to enjoy that gift without the heartache and worry that come from premarital sex. First Timothy 1, 18 and 19. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by following them, you may fight the good fight. 19. Holding on to faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these and so have shipwrecked their faith. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this message on today. Talk to me first.